we will move on now to the last um, last talk of the session. And the the last talk is computer says no, unpacking the human in the loop requirement in the context of wealth of fraud. This is by Doha Abu Elunis, who is a PhD student at Harvard Law. This talk will be pre-recorded, so I will share my screen and with the video that we have on our records. Hi everyone, thank you very much for joining. My name is Doha Abu Elunis and I will talk about the human in the loop, requirement to keep human in the loop in the process of automation. In particular, I will talk about the impact of automation on the discretion of public officers in the domain of welfare fraud. The street level bureaucrats are the public officers who used to work directly with individuals. Traditionally, their discretionary power was very limited. They were viewed as the operators of the higher administration and strict guidelines were detailing what they can do and when. Under the new public management approach, their discretionary power, their accumulated knowledge was more valued. They were granted more discretionary power. And they were able to shape policy. In welfare, it was leading to more decentralized welfare administration. When technology entered the equation, there was a shift from dealing with individual cases to more administrative tasks. Street level bureaucrats were feeding more data into machine and strategizing which task, tasks to automate next. The first case I want to talk about is coming from Michigan. The Unemployment Insurance Agency implemented in 2013 MIDAS, the Michigan Integrated Data Automated System. Um, they did that in order to reduce the cost associated with investigating fraud in unemployment benefits. They contracted with a private company and bought an off-the-shelf product that was custom to their need. MIDAS is a very draconian algorithm. It sifts through data, lag cases that are at high risk to be fraudulent, sends the individual's notices and uh, requirements for further information. Later on, MIDAS analyzes the information provided by the individuals and if MIDAS determined that the answers are not sufficient, it can automatically cut the benefits and go ahead with executing the debt, uh, which could lead to seizing tax returns and very heavy penalties. Um, MIDAS falsely accused thousands of individuals in committing fraud. Many of them had to file for bankruptcy or to plead guilty to offenses they didn't commit in order to end the misery as fast as possible. Few even committed suicide because of the false accusation. The next case study is coming from the Netherlands. The Ministry of Social Affairs and Employment deployed Siri system risk indication. It is not a mandatory project, and it's implemented only in municipalities that want to collaborate with governmental entities for sharing data. Its goal is similar to investigate welfare fraud. But unlike MIDAS, it's investigating all types of welfare fraud, not just unemployment fraud. Siri is exposed to 17 types of data coming from different governmental agencies, Ministry of Education, Housing, etc. It's also, unlike MIDAS, automated only the detection and investigation. What it does is flags cases that are at high risk to be fraudulent. Those cases can be put under government surveillance for up to two years. And after that, all the information is gathered and sent to the relevant agency for further investigation. Siri was also falsely accusing many individuals uh, and in February 2020, the court ruled that the use of Siri is illegal. Before talking about the human involvement, I want to emphasize there are that there are many reasons why the algorithm failed. Lack of human agency is one of them, but some are also related to poor algorithmic design in a comfortable sociopolitical um, context that the algorithms operated in. In terms of the 
human discretion. Uh, what I want to discuss now is how to assess whether after the automation there is sufficient and meaningful discretion. The first question to be asked is what exactly the algorithm automate, automated. This question would be answered in three uh, subparts. As for the automated domain, MIDOS automated a narrow domain, fraud only in unemployment benefits. So it's a system level bureaucracy, because if we know the factors that it's considering, it would be easy um, to tell what is leading to the final determination. Siri, however, is a large scale bureaucracy. It's considering um, fraud in all types of welfare benefits. System level bureaucracies are more favor favorable in this case. In terms of the parts of the process that were automated, MIDAS is a decision-making algorithm because it automated all the process from beginning to end, while Siri is a decision-aiding algorithm because its purpose is to assist the human in the loop. Because welfare fraud is a sensitive domain, decision-making algorithms have um, no place and they can be very dangerous. In terms of the automated task, MIDAS automated a rule because you would expect that it should be clear by the law what is considered a fraud, unemployment fraud. Although it automated a rule, a narrow rule, um, it, is, it seems to be hard to automate because by the law, when automating, um, when determining fraud, a determination about credibility and intent has to be made and it's not clear how an algorithm can determine that. Siri automated a standard, the standard of fraud investigation, because it is telling the human what exactly to investigate. Human in the loop should be more strengthened and added not just at the end after the two years of the surveillance, but only in deciding, also in deciding whether to put someone under surveillance and for how long. The second question that has to be determined is the degree of discretionary power that is shifting to the engineers and the technology. Throughout the life cycle of the algorithm, many discretionary decisions are being taken by the engineers that not always have a sufficient knowledge about the domain at stake. In Midas, for example, one thing that was uh, not explained at all is how the MIDOS caused the, the termination of the employment of 400 employees. And it's not clear how the discretion of those employees who used previously to do interviews with individuals is translated into the algorithm. Siri is also very opaque and it's not clear what is it considering and what is leading to the final determination. So just to back up a little bit, um, both MIDAS and Siri have some room left for discretion after the automation. In, it's clear that the room that MIDAS has is much narrower compared to Siri, uh, but after the public backlash, uh, the UIA said that they are adding more people in the room. So the next thing to be determined is if this uh, discretion is meaningful. And what would make the discretion meaningful? is um, the human algorithm interaction, how it's designed. Third thing that should be considered in this regard is what is the algorithmic output and how the street level bureaucrats are expected to act upon it. Both Mitos and Siri provide an up output of zero to one or one, yes or no, fraudulent, non-fraudulent. If it was a, in a form of a scale or of one, the explanation of the human officers that is taking the final determination. The second thing to be considered is to compare the situation to before the automation and to ask how many cases do street level bureaucrats have to deal with after the automation and how much time to dedicate to each one? I understand that this is not an easy thing to determine, but with the move to the new public management approach, 
uh, more mechanisms for tracking the performance of street level bureaucrats were already added. So this would be easy to implement. Another important part is the readiness of the institution. And here, Siri did much, much better because there is a specialized agency that is tasked with coordination between the ministry and the municipalities involved. And lastly, the involvement of the street level bureaucrats in the design uh, of the automation is very important. The idea is to make sure that the street level bureaucrats are not a rubber stamp of the algorithm, yet have a meaningful uh, room to apply discretion. Another uh, thing that would determine if the discretion is meaningful is whether the human in the loop is able to successfully comply with other requirements, other safeguards. In terms of MIDAS, it's mainly due process. So meaningful discretion would mean that the individual has the right to respond uh, and that there is sufficient time between sending the notice then waiting for the response of the individual and that all those are taken into account by the human that is doing the operation and in terms of siri there are more um, safeguards dictated by the gdpr so human proper human intervention would lead to compliance with proportionality accountability and transparency to conclude this diagram summarizes the steps that i detailed throughout the presentation for maintaining sufficient and meaningful discretion what i want to emphasize is discretionary street level bureaucrat discretionary street level bureaucracy is vital for the smooth operation of a democratic society and that it's not a, best, a second best solution thank you very much